Nothing can create a bad user experience quite like a heavily eroded section of trail. In this video, we're gonna focus on assessing the trail for two major factors, compaction caused by user groups and erosion caused by natural hydrologic systems. It's important that we regularly assess the trail tread and identify potential erosion issues before they become a major problem. An informed assessment can give us all the information we need to identify the correct solution. We'll go into some of the techniques we use to resolve these problems in later sessions. From the lush forests to the driest desert, the most powerful force acting on our trail is water. So the trail behind me is a great example of water getting funneled in from the surrounding land and causing significant erosion along the trail. All trails exist in a landscape that has always been shaped by water. When we change the landscape by installing a trail, we alter the way that water interacts with it. Sometimes we can design a trail that minimizes that impact by creating a smooth tread surface that doesn't alter the surrounding hydrology. With that being said, most of the time, we have to make compromises to keep our trail headed in the right direction. We end up depending heavily upon maintenance to keep the trail safe and looking its best. So, what are the signs that water is eroding our trail? The three main signs we're looking for are loose rocks, ruts, and areas of deposition. Typically, a freshly built piece of trail is almost completely free of loose rock. As water travels along the trail, it picks up smaller bits of soil and sediment, leaving behind all the rocks underneath. Without soil to hold them together, these rocks break free, move about under our feet and tires, neither of which is fun or safe. While the amount and size of the loose rocks will depend on the underlying geology, their presence can be a sign of water erosion. When a rocky area gets bad enough, users will avoid it if possible, creating trail braiding and expanding the zone of impact. This usually causes more erosion and compromises the surrounding environment. As more soil is carried away by water, we can start to see the formation of ruts or cuts. As the bottom of a cut gets deeper and wider, more water is captured and it starts to move faster. Faster moving water carries more sediment, which in turn cuts the channel farther. These cuts can become major obstacles in some conditions and can make the trail unsafe or completely impassable. Identifying cuts early in their formation is critical to preventing a small repair project from becoming a major undertaking. Perhaps the most subtle signs of erosion are areas of deposition. These are spots where faster moving water slows down or stops. As the water slows, it loses its ability to carry the material and settlement settles onto the trail. These fines, as we call them, continue to build up. While they don't necessarily cause a problem for users, they can clog the drains that we've built to try to remove water from the trail and prevent erosion downstream. Proper planning and execution of these drains helps to reduce the chances that they'll clog and need frequent maintenance. Deposition areas are easily identified by a flattish area with finer soil or rocks than the surrounding slopes. Areas of deposition not associated with drains sometimes retain water, creating pooling and muddy spots. Standing water like this creates its own set of problems by users leaving the trail to avoid them, creating more braiding and erosion. Surprisingly, another major contributor to trail erosion is trail users. This makes it even more important that all users pitch in and help fix the trail and preserve our shared experience. Problems such as cupping and berming are typically caused by compaction to the center of the trail tread. We'll cover how to mitigate some of these user impacts in another video. Volunteers should remember that assessment is a critical step in trail maintenance and spending time monitoring and evaluating the condition of the trail is a valuable contribution. As we dive deeper into how to solve some of these issues, we'll find that spending time looking at the overall pattern of water on the landscape can help our trails to become a more sustainable feature of the environment. 